Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to another edition of the show, part two of our look at the Savage Sword of Conan, black and white magazine from Marvel, in the co-captain's chair once again, showing off some stuff from his collection, Mr. Scott Berry. What's going on, Scott? No, not a whole lot, man. Just uh, staying dry, staying cool. All we can do these days, right? Is 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 about staying dry, today. staying cool. Why don't we sit inside and read some Conan, right? So Scott's going to show us some. Exactly. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, before we left off issue 26. We're going to take us. Scott's going to take us through issue 52 here on the Savage Sword of Conan. And I, for one, can't wait to see the rest of these covers because uh, I've only got like these. And it's not quite the same when you're reading them in these big omnibuses and you, you only see like black and white renditions of those wonderful covers. So uh, even though everything else is black and white like they are in those books, but the covers not quite the same. So what do you got for us? Exactly, sir. Yeah. And uh, we get started here with uh, number 26. Oh, look. And uh, any ideas on who did that cover? Uh, man, not quite. Jim Starlin. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he'd whip, cool. whip out a cover every now and then. Yeah, Jim, Jim always would appear in strange places. And you'd be like, oh my God, it's a Starling cover? That's pretty cool. Yeah you, yeah, you always would get some giant snakes in these old Conan books. Always. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Giant yeah. snakes. Giant snakes, giant spiders, spiders, giant scorpions. Spiders. Yep. You name it. <laughs> <laughs> and here we've got a saber tooth tiger. Oh, wonderful. Look at that. With the Bob Larkin cover. Bob Larkin did a fair number of these too. Yeah, Bob Larkin. Bob, didn't Bob Larkin do a bunch of those Planet of the Apes covers also? Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. I got a question for you, Pete. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're a music guy, and uh, I'm just wondering when you sit down to read your comics, do you pick music to read when you're when you're reading comics? Do you pick music to listen to while you're reading comics? I tend to read comics with nothing going on mm. most of the time. Yeah. In fact, I have, I have a hard, sometimes I'll like pull out some comic books while my wife is watching TV and it can be distracting sometimes for me. No, I get that. Yeah. Um, I think certain, I, I think there are certain um, styles of music though, that kind of fit certain books. And I, I generally take, sometimes I'll do it and I, I tend to pick things that are of a certain era, you know, of, of, the, of the comic I'm reading. But uh, I think, I think for, instrumental music would be better suited. I think if I if I'm going to listen to music while I'm reading anything, whether it be books or comics, I think like jazz fusion, something like that. That's mm -hmm. you know, no, no, no singing. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I get you. I was thinking, uh, but, I, you know, you're a big Maiden fan. I, I was just like Maiden just kind of fits these books, you know, just galloping you know, kind of. <laughs> guitar, you know. I, I would say that would probably work. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I think Dio, anything with Dio, you know, Rainbow Dio, Black Sabbath Dio. Yep. Yep. Right, yeah. Just Dio, you know. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, wow, this there's is a lot going on on that one. Holy cow. Yeah, it's an Ernie Chan cover. Okay. Yeah. That totally looks like Yeah. That. that does have a lot going on. Yeah. It's amazing how often the Red Sonia showed up in a lot of these and separate stories, I would imagine, right? Uh, many of them were, yeah. Nice. Pterodactyl or something. I'm yeah, sure yeah. This one. Nevertheless, full cover. So what was the other uh, cover price on these right around this time? I'm assuming we're about issue 30, I think, right? Uh, let's see. We hit 30. Oh, there's 31. I want to get them out of order. There's 31. I think they're still holding at a dollar. Okay. They started at a dollar. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking we're probably about due for a price change. I think this is a Howard Chaykin cover. Okay. Yeah. He didn't do a whole lot, but uh, what he did do is pretty cool. And of course, we got Mr. Norum. There we go. Yep. Very cool. And another Norm, number 
Not sure what that is going after him there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of slime monster. I guess. Curse of the monolith. And this one, another Ernie Chan. Oh, I like that. Of the ice worm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. She looks mighty cold there, huh? I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, for, for being in a cold place, they don't they don't press very warmly. No, they don't. They don't. Especially the women. But I guess Conan doesn't either. I mean, no. he wears the same outfit all the time. And it's yep. Like a bear skin. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah. we got the head. And, and that's about it. And yeah, maybe some headgear. Yeah, another severed head. Yeah, yeah. Gotta love it, right? <laughs> that's another Ernie Chan. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And here's another Earl Norum. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's just... yeah. Kind of looking over the battle there. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a little bit different. That's that's pretty cool. That is different because it doesn't. I mean, if he's looking over the battle, I'm guessing he's not participating. In the yeah. I'm wondering if that might be like a King Conan story. They threw some King Conan stories in there before uh, the King Conan series got launched. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's another Earl Norum. Yeah, he's he's doing a bunch of them at this at this time. Yeah, yeah his like his uh, covers definitely have a certain feel to them. Even the way they're colored. That's true. I can totally tell it's his. Okay. What was that that I just gave you? That's 37. All right. 38. Nice. Now he's doing a bunch in a row here. Yeah. I mean, it was like kind of every other issue there. Now he's doing like, that's like the third one straight. Fighting some kind of goblin or something. Yeah, Valley of the Vampires. And another one. Oh, I like that. I love the blood dripping off the axe. Yeah. I like how they're like showing it from the point of view of whatever those creatures are, right? And blood and the really snow. Yeah. Back, yeah. I'm guessing this this might not have gone as gone over as well as a uh Conan the Barbarian cover, given all the blood and everything. Yeah. No, that's cool too. That yeah. That almost looks like I'm a Boris. Sure Is that a Boris cover? It looks like it. Uh don't see a name on this. No. It's, man, it looks so much like uh, I don't think it's it's not Norum. It looks uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. Looks very Boris or Frazetta y. No, that's not a word, but. <laughs> sure, it is. I, I made it up on the fly. There we go. There you go. Yeah, it is now. Another Earl Norum. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. You have the Femme Fatale here. And yeah. There's one distress. Another one there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you got some butt kicking ladies over here, too. So, you there know. You go. <laughs> Got your, you got your Carolyn Monroe figure there down on the bottom, right? Just damsel in distress. I didn't didn't Carolyn Monroe, didn't she kind of kick butt though? Yeah, in a couple films. Yeah. She yeah. was uh Star Crash. She kicked butt in Star Crash. She uh she sort of kicked butt in um Sinbad, uh, the seventh the Golden Void to Sinbad. Yeah. She wasn't just eye candy. Exactly. Uh this is another Bob Larkin. There we go. That's a nice it looks one. like he's taking on some kind of a giant Venus flytrap. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> the trees of Kamburu. And we're still at a dollar on these. Still only a buck. Two. I mean, we're, we're getting close to the 80s, I think. Uh, the 1980s. Um, we're 43. And that's another Larkin. Yeah, that's a nice one. The evil wizard. Ah, uh, Thothamon, yeah. Ah, Thothamon, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of the greatest, greatest villains of that whole era. 
of storytelling. Absolutely. I mean, if Conan had an arch enemy, that would be him. Yep. Yep. Mm, third Larkin cover in a row. Okay. Nice. It just looks like whoever's on the other end of this, things are not going to go well for him. No, not at all. <laughs> He's already taken out a few guys. <laughs> <laughs> the blood, the red stuff is flowing freely. Exactly. All right. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. All right. Number 45. And I do not see a name on this. But just look at the look at the lighting on this. I mean, it's just yeah. Wow, pretty cool. Not Norum. I don't think it's Larkin. Mm, I should have looked some of these up before I got on with you. <laughs> yeah, here's a Norum. There we go. Number 46. And the giant serpent. Yeah, there were no shortage of giant serpents in yep. Iboria. Moon of blood. Yeah, I like that. These are all in great condition, too. Yeah, thanks. I uh, try. I, but, you know, I, I started getting these like in the early 2000s. And uh, back then, uh, they weren't, for the most part, they weren't that hard to get. And for the most part, I found them in pretty nice shape. And and they weren't too expensive. Now, yeah. check lately. I don't know what they're going for now. I imagine you know the Savage Tales issues and the early Savage Swords probably going for a bit. But issues like this, you might be able to still get for a good price. I don't know. There's my shirt. Oh, there you go. I need to order one. <laughs> <laughs> I looked far and wide for one of these. Right? They're hard. They're not. It's not easy to find a, a old Marvel Conan shirt. Uh, but when I looked. I found and I bought. That was 47. 48. I'm not sure what that is exactly. This is Nestor Redondo cover. I think he might have been the one that did that, that cover. I couldn't figure out who it was. Oh, the other one a couple issues ago? Yeah. That's yeah, where he had that. the winged helmet. Yep. Yeah. Because this exactly. looks very, the style looks kind of similar. Look the white creature. Awesome. Does wow. Light. Yeah, I thought maybe that was a spider, but no, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's got hands, so I don't know. Yeah. And this is another Redondo, who was pretty underrated artist, in my opinion. Uh, did some stuff for DC, did Swamp Thing after Bernie Wrightson left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Following Ber Bernie Wrightson's a tough act. Oh, Bernie Wrightson's amazing, yeah. <laughs> but Redondo was no slouch. Uh, that's great. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And this is the first, I believe it's the first one, and the it was a four-part storyline uh, that tells the story how Conan becomes king. Nice. So that's why we're going to stop at 52. And here's number 50. I mean, this is another Redondo. Love this one. Yeah, I mean, that that looks like a true painting. I mean, look at look at everything that's going on there, but it's all yeah. so detailed. Yeah, that's quite yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Senator Earl Norum. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a, a werewolf type creature. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sucker for werewolves. So as soon as yeah. I saw that, I was like, yeah, now, now we're talking my language. That's that's cool. And last but not least, we got number 52. And at last, Conan becomes king, crown and the carnage. And that's also Nesta Redonda. Oh, cool. Nice. So, the yeah. Conquering King. There you go. So, yeah, that would be your old king right there. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. That's a nice run. Meet the new boss. Not the same as the old. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> And just so everybody wants can get a, an understanding of what the insides of those look like. Uh, so again, I've got these volumes and basically, you know, highly detailed stuff, all in black and white. Bill Kane. 
Yeah, Gil Kane did a few of these. He did, um, yeah. That's right, he did. Yeah, I, it's, some, I, it's interesting to see the different, uh, I mean, Buscema did a lot of the, a lot of the pencils on these, but uh, they, they paired them with different inkers. Yep. And it was interesting to see the different interpretations that the anchors had, and they all had their own style. I mean, Alcala had a, a, a certain style, uh, De Zaniga had a certain style. Um, I'm not sure Redondo did any. Any of the insides, the interiors? I'm not yeah, sure if he did the insides. Um, I don't remember. Oh, and Ernie Chan, he definitely had a distinctive style. Um, but good stuff, and uh, you know, you would get absolutely things like this. I mean, look at that. Just and these also had uh, other stories featuring other characters, like uh, I think when we were, I don't know if we mentioned it when we were recording or not, but uh, you said something about, um, shit, what's his name now? I forgot. Solomon Kane and There you go, Solomon Kane and Paul the Copper, you know, those guys would, would show up in, in backup stories. In yeah. Well, that's uh, most of the... Uh the Marvel magazines were, you know, a hundred plus pages, right? So they had some stuff to fill. So they usually had like a pretty extensive uh, letters page. They usually had editorials in there. Right. Sometimes they had tie-ins to movies and things like that. And they would show some, you know, have little articles about films uh, as right. well as the, the main feature. And then a couple of smaller features. I mean, when you really think about it, those magazines were a great bang for your buck because they were magazines. That's true. It wasn't just absolutely a black and white. You got all yeah. sorts of cool things in there, which was pretty neat. So, I mean, I look back on like some of the Planet of the Apes ones and even like, uh, cause they launched, I believe the Hulk black and white magazine. Was right. Still going when the Ferrigno. Rampaging Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. And then they would do some tie-ins to the TV series and whatnot. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's a shame that they didn't really, pick up across the board you know and most of them only lasted x amount of issues with the exception of this right. one that we're talking about here today it kind of makes it easier to collect them though or, you know that is true yeah that the whole true. series it's like maybe a dozen issues you know yeah if that yep I got it <laughs> yeah I got a bunch of those i got the but uh, vampire tales and all oh, those are fantastic yeah Monsters unleashed and dracula lives and yeah I got, I got those whole runs and they were all about maybe 11 or 12 issues yeah those are really good the vampire ones yeah uh, anything with monsters and, and creatures it's right up my alley so absolutely great stuff well cool well thanks to scott for uh showing us off part of his uh conan collection on these uh, last two episodes here so uh i think we're going to see more of scott on the channel in the future he's got a very extensive uh, comic book collection that we would love to tap into from time to time as long as you're ready Bring it on man all right cool Bring it on. Sounds good. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you uh, have not already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted every time we post a new video, which is generally speaking every Wednesday and Friday morning. And uh, stay tuned next week for more stuff here on the channel. While Bill and I will be back at you with more comic book fun inside the covers, favorite covers, uh, bring on the villains, all sorts of fun stuff. And hopefully as the weather's getting a little warmer, we'll be going out uh, to some comic shops and little mini comic Cons and bring you some uh, on the spot stuff from there. So for Scott Barry, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time here at Comic Book Geezers. Bye bye. <laughs>